Remember when kids thought the future was all theirs and they would be doing fantastic things? Well, yes, in do. some places, that's still happening. I'm Scott Ott, and this is Bill Whittle Now. And Bill, this is frankly just a flat-out good news story about some kids in Ireland, uh, kids that are, it's not clear whether they were born in Nigeria or just of Nigerian parents, but they were described as Nigerian Irish kids, um, young girls in the kind of their mid-teens, who uh, entered a competition uh, that are that's called Technovation Girls, uh, 1,500 entries from 62 countries, and theirs was the prize-winning entry. And Bill, what they did was they developed an app called Memory Haven that's designed to help both people who suffer from dementia and their caregivers. Um, it has several different features that includes uh, photo albums, music, um, face and voice recognition, memory games, and other kinds of reminders, all designed to help facilitate a more normal lifestyle for people who are suffering dementia. 16, 17 year old kids, Margaret, Rachel, Joy, used to be kind of the way we thought our future was going to be. We were gonna make an impact in the world. What do you think of this, Bill? I think we ought to grant them immediate uh, entry visas to the United States and get them on a fast pass, uh, path to citizenship. <laughs> it's This app is actually going to be in the App Store. It's not just a, a, a prize-winning uh, app and they won this competition. And uh, we will try to include a clip right here, if we have permission to do so, of the girls finding out at the moment when they found out who won the competition. Uh, this video has gone viral on the internet and the celebration <laughs> is just really a kick. Uh, but these are these young women took on this challenge because their mentor uh, has a mother who suffers from dementia, and they tried to solve that problem. Um, Bill, I wonder what more we can do besides just competitions to let young people know that there's an opportunity out there, not just in the technology sphere, but in lots of others. You don't have to wait till you're 50 years old to try to figure out how to solve a problem. And maybe, as might be the case here, uh, wind up making yourself a business in the process. Because once or twice a year, I've known to meander off the trail a little bit. If you could remind <laughs> me about competitions, uh, I want to come back to the idea of competitions. But I'm going to uh, write that all, down because I can't remember. Okay. First of all, their mentor and I have something in common. My mom uh, just turned 90. She's been suffering from Alzheimer's and dementia for the last 15 or 20 years. It is a it is a emotionally devastating experience for the people who suffer from it because you find yourself with somebody you love very much living in this twilight world of being dead or not dead. They're 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 alive, but they're not here. It is a it is a it is a dreadful, horrible thing. So this is something that has a, a, a deep personal impact with me. And the reason I think this is such a brilliant idea is because for most people who've been through this and for most people who suffer through this, one of the things that always strikes most family members is both difficult to understand and maybe on some level disturbing and other levels comforting, but it, it seems to be consistently true that people who suffer from this horrible uh, disease tend to lose their most recent memories first, and their most powerful memories are the, usually the ones that happen to them as, as children or as young adults. And that's where they seem to want to go back to. And having an app that basically surrounds them with things that are of great comfort to them, music that they might have listened to, pictures, maybe clips from movies or, or whatever, is a profoundly, profoundly brilliant idea. The second thing I'll say, and I didn't forget competitions, is that the genius of, of the iPhone and, and, its, and its successors, the genius of it is not in the design, the, the, the um, technical design, although that is a marvel into itself. The genius was the idea of, of third party applications. If Apple was responsible for putting out whatever apps were available on the iPhone and Samsung for, for, for their so phones and so on, we'd have 30 or 40 apps. There are millions of them now, and you've written two of them. And I'm not gonna get into the details, but you know how tough it is technically. But the thing about an app is, Scott, is not the technical achievement of the app. That can be quite formidable. The entire genius of an app is, is the realization of, of the issue and the problem. It's trying to figure out what, what do we need that an app could solve. And I made a decision to buy the iPhone 
uh, many years ago, 2010 or something like that, 11, based on one of the most um, trivial apps ever. It was, it was Shazam. I was in a restaurant and somebody said, hey, check this out. There's a song playing over a loud noise, tapped a button, da -da -da -da, listened to it, came back, and then it presented the song where I could buy it, push a button, and so on. And the second I saw that, I said, I know exactly how that works. Recorded the sound, sent it to a, a computer, server matched it against other audio waveforms, sent back the answer. But if I had been, but I could never have conceived of it. So somebody did. And, and, and these, these young women doing this is, is a sign of tremendous hope in a time that can be very, very bleak. And I wish them the very, very best. Now, back to competitions real quick. Um, it's been my uh, high honor and privilege to be friends with many people in aerospace, uh, especially my friend Bert Rutan. And he is an enormous proponent of prizes. Uh, Bert Rutan built, manned, staffed the world's first private space enterprise. He put a private citizen into space on private money without any uh, backing from the government whatsoever. Paul Allen wrote him a check, but one of the reasons that he wrote the check was because there was something called the X Prize, which later became the Ansari X Prize. And I wanna say it was for $20 million, although I'm not 100% sure about that, but that feels right. When, when you put a 20 million prize in front of people, it makes it much easier for them to raise venture capital because venture capitalists say, well, if this horse wins the race, I get, I get my money back. And what you end up saying, and the point of all this is to say that a $20 million prize can produce hundreds, if not hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars of research. We'll go chasing that prize. It is the most cost-effective way to innovate. And not only the most cost-effective way, it's also the most frugal way because only the winner, only the people that actually achieved the mission get the money. So the idea that this was a competition is wonderful. We should be having competitions like this all the time with serious rewards, the kind of rewards that would make uh, young people and older people dedicate full time to this, at least as much time as they could if they thought they had a serious chance to come home with that prize money. This is because you've had personal experience uh, with this with your mom. Uh, let me just go into a little more detail about Memory Haven, this specific app. Uh, as I mentioned, it can be used by patients and caregivers. Uh, it at this point has six features and they target the three problems that seem most uh, troubling about dementia, memory loss, the difficulty with recognition, as well as speech. Uh, there's a reminder feature that alerts both the patient and the caregiver that it's time for to take the medication. Um, the photo album allows the user to flip through tagged photos identifying who's in the image. That's and Bill, brilliant. I have seen it myself. I had an opportunity a number of years ago to uh, go into a couple of nursing homes and to sing songs that I grew up on, which were songs from a previous generation. I was raised by my grandfather. And so I got in, I went in there and sang old crooner tunes from my old you know, grandfather's 78 uh, record collection. And they brought in these memory care patients and people who were uh, just almost completely debilitated. And those folks sat on the front rows and they just looked like they were staring at a concrete wall until the piano started to play. And I started to sing. And then little by little, you'd see their lips moving along with the sounds of tunes that they, of the words of tunes that they hadn't heard in 50 years. Um, and this, they've incorporated music into this app as well. Um, I, I, I guess I just wanted to get your reaction to those features because I know how personal it is for you. Uh, I, I've had two experiences that give me some small insight into this. Uh, one from the outside, one from the inside. Uh, last time I saw my mom, I entered the hospital room, uh, the, 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 the uh, nursing home room. And she looked up and she recognized me and she could tell it was me and she smiled. And that lasted for about two seconds. And then after that, I was just somebody else visiting. Uh, and, and I was prepared for that. Uh, I was glad to see the initial recognition. I think if, if my mom had had available to her uh, photographs that she could flip through because they've got a lot of time on their hands mostly. If she could have, if she could have had photographs flipping through uh, memories and, and having names like this is your son Bill, this is your, your daughter and so on, I think that would have helped that situation quite a lot. I think it would have helped her retain an awful, uh, a much stronger connection to the faces and the, and the, uh, the role behind those faces. Uh, on a personal level, 
I was driving a limousine for a living, and when I got out here in 1990, because I was living on adrenaline and candy bars, I I found myself coming back to the to the um, the, the home garage of the limo service, a route that I'd driven hundreds of times, hundreds and hundreds of times. And I looked around and I suddenly had no idea where I was. I didn't know where I was. I didn't know how to get back to the studio. I don't know what my blood sugar was. It was probably like 2000 or something. It was, it, I, I was basically suffering from a, from a blood sugar induced amnesia. And I didn't, remember, I didn't remember how to get to the office. They had to talk me in on the radio. I didn't know where I was. I didn't know anybody's phone number. And that is a terrifying experience. That is an absolutely terrifying experience. And the image I had, Scott, when you talked about playing those crooner tunes, was I had the image of, of somebody who is lost in, a, in almost like in a whiteout blizzard situation. They know they're alive and they know that they, that they had a home and they are wandering out there in this endless white plain, not knowing where to go. And the idea that they could be out there in a snowstorm like that and then hear the sound of music that they were familiar with and turn in that direction and walk towards the music and feel like, okay, I'm, I, I'm, I know where I am now and I know I'm going in the right direction. I feel like I'm going home. That is a profound mercy. And, uh, and I would love to see more of that being done on a regular basis in these places. Our members at BillWhittle.com make all of this possible, these kind of conversations, sometimes on the breaking news of the day, sometimes on broader ideas like this one. Uh, we're grateful for their contributions that make it possible for us to do this, and we invite you to join them and be part of a team that really wants to advance the pursuit of happiness. For Bill Whittle, I'm Scott Ott. Thanks for watching.